There's several ways to make brown buttonholes. If you've had difficulty in the past, I suggest that you try this method. Unlike the machine-made buttonholes, which are put in after the garment takes shape, brown buttonholes are one of the first steps. Let me review with you the preparatory steps in making a brown buttonhole, so we can spend most of our time on the buttonhole itself. First of all, the markings for the buttonholes in the center front are placed on the inner facing. Buttonholes on women's clothing are always on the right front, so be sure you're working on the right unit. Turn to the wrong side and pin your inner facing in place. Stay stitched through both thicknesses at the neckline and at the shoulder seam. Most of the work on the bound buttonholes will be on the right side, so we need to use basting stitches to transfer these markings to the right side. Place the basting stitch for the buttonholes a fourth of an inch above the markings. I know you're going to wonder why we're placing this basting line a quarter of an inch above the marking. Watch this basting line and this carbon line, which is being marked darker. And I think you will have your answer by the end of this demonstration. The length of the buttonhole is determined by the diameter of the button plus the thickness. Mark this length along the basting line for your buttonhole. Do this for all your buttonholes and then connect these marks with rows of basting stitches. These preparations will help you make all your buttonholes alike. Next, from scraps of your dress material, cut a one and a half inch strip along the lengthwise grain. This strip needs to be marked into three equal widths, one half inch each. So, Set your seam guide for a half inch, put in one row, then turn it over and put in a second row of stitching. Fold on one of these basting lines and press. Then stitch an eighth of an inch from the crease. Now fold the other side down and press it. In stitching this one, be sure to hold the free edge of the other side up, out of the way, so it does not get stitched. This strip will actually form your buttonholes. It has now become a strip with two small tucks. In fact, it's sometimes called a tucked buttonhole. You can check your accuracy at this time and make any corrections before applying it to your garment. If you follow each step accurately, the edges of the tucks will meet in the center when they're folded in. Each one of the buttonholes requires a strip about an inch longer than the buttonhole itself. This extra inch will give us about a half an inch to fasten down on either side of the buttonholes. And then this strip should be long enough to provide material for a practice buttonhole. At this point, you're probably becoming curious as to what these buttonholes will look like when finished. Let me show you my practice buttonhole. And since this was a practice buttonhole, I haven't taken time to remove the bastings. Now we're ready to put the buttonholes onto our garment. Working on the right side of your blouse,
take one of the sections from your strip and lay it down so that the two raw edges are standing up. Bring it up to your basting line so that the top edge comes to it and slightly covers the basting. Then be sure that you have about a half an inch extending on either side of the buttonhole markings. Pin this in place and array the stitch. I'll continue to use white thread so that you can see the stitches. But at this point, you would change to a thread that matches your fabric. And change the stitch length to a sharp stitch. I'm going to sew right along this row of stitching that was used to form the tucks. And in order for you to see how I'm going to stitch, I'll use an illustration. This represents the tuck section of our buttonhole. And these are the two rows of basting lines that mark the end of the buttonhole. I'm going to start stitching a fourth of an inch from the end and sew right up to the end of the buttonhole. Leave my needle down and turn the fabric around, sew right back on that row of stitching to the other end. Turn the fabric around and stitch right back another fourth of an inch. Now let me show you how to do that. and stitch this other tuck down exactly the same way. Continue this step on all of your buttonholes so they remain in the same stage of development all the way through. Before you go to the next step, check your accuracy on the wrong side. Your lines of stitching should end right at the basting line. And the two rows should remain the same distance apart on every one of your buttonholes. Here is the pencil line midway between your two rows of stitching. This line will end up as the middle of your buttonhole. So now we'll cut on that line. These represent the two stitching lines you just looked at on the wrong side of the buttonhole. I'm going to cut along this carbon line that was marked with a pencil. And here are two important things I want you to keep in mind. Start cutting in the center and cut diagonally out to the very end of the stitching. Cut all the way out to that last stitch to avoid puckers at the end of your buttonhole. Then stop cutting far enough back from the end that you can have a deep triangle at the end. And here's about the way your cutting line will look. Hold your fingers on the underside of your buttonhole to keep the, the pieces out of your way while you're cutting. Cutting is as important as the stitching. Here's where your buttonhole seems like magic. Push all these raw edges through to the wrong side, smooth them out, and there's your buttonhole. Hold the two edges of the buttonhole together with overcasting stitches so that they will stay right in place while we complete the buttonhole.
And then to reinforce the end of the buttonhole, fold the garment back and stitch this triangle down to the tuck. The basting stitch is right at the base of the triangle. Use that as a guide and stitch right on that line. Back stitch to tack. Stitch the other end, the buttonhole, and that's as far as you'll go with the buttonholes until your dress is practically finished. But I know you're anxious to see how we cut through the facing. And here is a garment ready for that step. Trim the extra material from the ends of your buttonhole and then baste the facing down to the garment around the buttonhole. Mark the length of the buttonhole by putting a pin down on either end. Turn it over and cut the facing between the two pins. Remove the pins and cut just a few threads beyond the place where the pin was in. Fold the facing under and whip it down to the stitching line. Reinforce the end of the buttonholes by making two or three stitches right on top of each other. Here is the wrong side of the buttonhole, and here is the right side. Try making a buttonhole this way. I think you'll like it.